Hello brothers, sisters, friends. Welcome to our series, My God and I. I hope you really enjoyed your quiet time and uh, reading those verses that talks about uh, today's topic, the potter and the clay. Uh, now, if you remember, we're going to go through a journey to discover God and our relationship with Him. So we're gonna, the way we're going to do it is we're going to look at the metaphors of our relationship with God. We're going to look at six metaphors. The first one, which we're going to talk about today, the potter and the clay. The second one, the shepherd and the sheep. And the third one, the farmer and the plant. The fourth one, the king and the subject. The fifth one, the father and child. And of course, the last one, the groom and the bride. So let's start off by reading the theme passage in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 1. This is a passage where God told Jeremiah to go to the potter's house to see how the potter makes its pot. And God was using this to tell Jeremiah to preach to the people that is how he is like, like a potter in his relationship with them. Let's start from verse 1. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house. And there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot that he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does? declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. So this is the description, potter and the clay. Obviously, God is the potter and we are the clay. So as Jeremiah went to the potter's house, watching the way the potter forms, forms the pot, one of the things that he noticed was that the pot that the, the potter was making was the clay was marred. In other words, the clay was ruined. And the potter was not satisfied with the ruined pot. And so what did he do? He took that pot, discarded it, and redo a new pot as best as he thinks it should be. And that is so exciting to look at the way God works with us. God is the potter, we are the clay. And yes, our life can be marred. Our life can be in a ruin. But God will want to work us as best as He could so that He can form an amazing pottery, an uh, amazing you in your life. Isn't that exciting to know? God is not interested in just good better, but best, a best self of you. And that is how he formed us. So let's first talk about the roles. God is the potter, we are the clay. And what are some of the characteristics that we see about the potter? The potter is artistic and creative. The potter is knowledgeable. He knows what he's doing. The potter is hard working. He's attentive to his work, he's patient, he's gentle and careful in the way he does. And of course, at the very end, he's proud of his work. And that is how God is like to us. He is attentive, he works hard, he forms us. And when he's done, he's like, yes, this is a great pottery. And of course, the clay, which is us, it started off marred. Okay? Uh, just a piece of clay that is ugly looking. Hard and fragile, it's a mess. We, we go to the playground, we look at the clay, we feel like, ah, right? If you got clay in your foot or, or your shoes, what do you do? You wash it off. We don't like clay, you know? It makes us, feel, uh, it makes us dirty. It's not pure, it's dull, it's not wanted. It's, it's such a common material in the world. But yet, in the potter's hand, this unwanted common material that is dull and in a mess 
He formed it into something precious. Let me now read to you Isaiah chapter 29, verse 16. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, You did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, You know nothing? You know, the problem with us, brothers and sisters, sometimes we complain. Okay, we look at ourselves, we, we look at the mirror, and we look at the situation that we are in, and we complain, and we question, God, why do you make me this way? Have you ever felt that way? I know I have. We all have. Sometimes we feel like God made a mistake. Well, God did not make any mistake. Okay, we need to learn to what? Trust. Trust that God has done his very best to make you into a beautiful pottery. Now we're going to look at the process. How pottery are made. There are five steps. Number one, that's the sourcing and preparing the pottery. Number two, centralizing and shaping the mud. And number three, trimming and drying. Number four, firing. And the five, glazing and sanding. I myself have went to a, a, a pottery workshop before and watched the way they did the work in the pottery. Wow, it is so amazing. So the first step, okay, in, in forming the pottery, in other words, forming us, sourcing, preparing, that is what God does. He sources out from this world, brought us out from this world. And then he prepare our heart to receive him. Are we willing to let God's hand work in our heart? He sources out and he's going to work in our heart and, and to make us soft and to make us uh, malleable so that we can be formed into an incredible pottery. And that reminds me of this verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, Dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of the reverence of God. Preparing. Sourcing. God prepares us. And you know how He prepares us? He wants us to purify ourselves. God mold the mud, the clay, Get rid of all the impurities. And in the same way, there are impurities, sins in our life. As what the Bible says, let us purify ourselves before God so that we can be what? Holy before Him. What are the sins that you might be struggling? Are you purifying yourself before God so that He can prepare you for the pottery process? And the second step is centralizing and shaping. You know, after sourcing and, uh, and preparing the, the, the clay, the potter brings the clay to the, uh, the turntable where he will centralize, in other words, put it in the center, okay, and start to shape the pot, right? You can see it going and then you will shape the pot and making it round. Now, if the pot, if the clay is not centered, then when he is shaping it, it will get all in a mess. So he has to put it in the center, making sure it is centered, then he can shape it. And the same way in our own life, we need to center our life with God. Let me show you in the verse, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. Yet you, Lord, are our father, we are the clay. You are the potter, and we are all formed by your Hands. In order to be centered to God, we need to remember God is the potter. We need to trust and surrender our lives to His hand as He shapes us, as He, as he tries to show us what to do to center our life to Him. Is your life centered towards God? Do you let God center you where you are fully committed to Him? So what is the third process? Trimming, drying, that is a long process. When you trim, you get rid of all the rough surfaces. 
and then you put those uh, pottery before you put it into the process of firing onto a shelf to dry. And the reason you do that is so that the clay can be evenly dry before it goes into the furnace. If the pot, the clay is not evenly dry and it, you put it into the furnace, the clay will crack or the clay will explode. So this is very important. It's a time where we wait. We wait and to let our heart, right? to be centered with God. So let's read Psalm chapter 27, verse 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Do you wait for God or are you impatient? So often we only want quick, quick, quick result. We pray, God answer us. We ask of God, we expect God to deliver us. And when God doesn't seem to be delivering us, we get frustrated. We feel like, God, where, where are you? We need to learn to wait. Okay? The process of pottering, making the pot, making us perfect in Christ, it takes time. The process for you to change your character, uh, the, the need, your, your bad habits, it takes time. But we need to work on it. We need to let God work on it on our heart. We need to be patient towards God. And the next step is firing. Whoa! <laughs> if you see this picture, firing, you get like, wow, it is really, really hot. Well, nobody likes to be in the furnace. But that process of firing is crucial because that will take out all the rest of the moisture to harden the pottery. So let's read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, which talk about the firing in our own lives. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Just like the pottery, we too are refined. What are the things that it's talking about here? It's talking about trials, tribulations, challenges, and difficulties. It will come to our life. Being a Christian doesn't mean there's no problem. Again, God is with us and He'll help us, but we'll still face problems. We'll still face difficulty. But we must be willing to let this fire of challenges refine our hearts where during this time of trial, we are still trusting the Lord. That is how we trust God. During the times of trials, we are patient, we let the fire find us, and we are still committed to Him, doing what is right and not compromise. Many people, in the time of trials, they compromise. They lose their faith and they compromise. For us, the Bible says what? It proves the genuine of our faith. No matter how hard it is, for better or for worse, we are going to be faithful with God even though we are refined by fire. The final process, glazing and sanding. Oh, we love this part. Isn't the pottery beautiful when they glaze it? You know, so I'm going to read to you a scripture from Psalm chapter 139, verse 14. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My favorite verse. Glazing and sanding. This is my favorite process. The process here is to make us look beautiful. Attractive, shiny, and not dull. God at the very end want to make us shiny and beautiful. Let me show you a picture. From this, clay, mar, a mess, dull and common, to this, beautiful, shiny, glorious pottery. And in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6, it says here, we 
are his treasured possession. You know, if you have a beautiful pottery, you look at it, example over here, it is really, really gorgeous. You put it in decoration, you admire it because it is wonderfully made. And if we let God work in our heart all the way from the beginning, sourcing and preparing, working through the impurities, all the way to the very end, where He glazes and shines, we will be a perfect pottery, perfect children of God. So we talk about three things. The roles, God is the potter, we are the clay. Okay, we are not the potter, we are the clay. And the great news is God is a great potter, perfect potter. He wants to make us into the best pottery, as best that he could do. Secondly, we study the process. It is a long process. It is a hard process. To make a pottery, it takes sometimes three and a half weeks to four weeks. It is a slow process. It's not easy for our lives to be put mature and perfect at Christ. It, is, it takes time, but we have to be willing to let God work in our heart. And we have to be willing to be surrendered to Him and trust Him in the way He works with us. And finally, the outcome. Beautiful. Beautiful pottery. Amen. So next week, we're going to explore the next metaphor, the shepherd and the sheep. And I have five verses for our quiet time. First one, Psalms chapter 23, verse 1 to 4. Second one, John chapter 10, verse 1 to 15. Third one, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. Fourth one, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11 to 16. And the fifth one, Luke chapter 15, verse 4 to 7. And as what I mentioned to you previously, as you read through this quiet time, pay attention, don't rush through it. Journey together. Surrender yourself to a great quiet time. So some questions that we should ask ourselves is number one, what do you observe? What do you learn from this passage? And after you learn from this passage, you write down the applications. How does it apply to my day-to-day -day life? And then thirdly, write down a resolution, one thing that you will do because of what you read. And then fourthly, do your memory verse for the entire week. It could be one of these passages or it could be any other passages. And finally, make sure you pray about what you've learned. Okay, and end of the following weekend, you will have a time where you have a discussion group together. So I'll see you again. Bye.